Hello, word nerds. Welcome to the dictionary. What's everybody doing today? What are you doing today? You, oh, I just gonna listen to the dictionary and then go about the rest of my day. I am recording this on January 30th, 7.04 a.m. I am quite sleepy. Not a ton of sleep. But I just wanna uh, I just wanna go take a nap. Wouldn't that be great? Uh it would be great, but no. We need to make some podcast content. So, the first word in this episode is eristic. E-R-I-S-T-I-C. Uh, could also be eristical because it is an adjective from 1637. And this is characterized by disputations and often subtle and specious or specious reasoning. So when something is heuristic, you are characterizing it as disputatious. I, I have to assume that that has something to do with um, disputing things, arguing, saying, that's not right, I'm right. Um, and often subtle and specious reasoning. Yeah, it's all about... Uh, reasoning, thinking about things, what's right, what's wrong. Hmm. Aristic. Okay. Aristically is an adverb, and the etymology is from the Greek word aristikos, which means fond of wrangling, <laughs> uh, which is from erizine, which means to wrangle, uh, and also from eris, which means strife, which we learned in the previous episode is from the goddess of strife. So that's why Eris is named the goddess of strife, because Eris is strife. It's right there in her name. So, fond of wrangling. Oh, I just love to wrangle all of the cats. Let's get them together and have a little party. Uh, so, fond of wrangling. This is, a, this is an interesting one. Um, yeah, I, th I feel like I want a bit more context, uh, like an example of where where you would use this, how you would use this. Um, yeah, well, we got another version because that was that was just the first form of heuristic. Uh, my sound effect today is going to be ha 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 ha. The second form of heuristic is a noun from 1659. Number one is a person devoted to logical disputation a person devoted to logical I, that just seems like they're they, all they do all they want to do all the time is just argue about stuff it's like that monty python sketch hello i'm i'm here to have an argument oh well you go down to room 1e okay thank you very much uh that's a fascinating genius sketch i just want to have an argument an argument, an argument isn't, isn't just saying, yes, it is. No, it isn't. <laughs> yes, it is. No, it isn't. Oh, my God. They go. That's so funny. So a person devoted to logical disputations. I'm arguing things in a logical way. So I am an heuristic, right? Sure. Number two, the art or practice of disputation and polemics. I don't remember what polemics is. I think I've heard of it before. Man, there's, I think there's just different levels of words and vocabulary and i'm at this low level because there's all these fun words that are way too smart for my brain heuristic yeah i don't know if i've ever heard this used in any way but it's an interesting idea of somebody who just wants to dispute things argue but be logical about it and they love to do that all the time it's the art the art of disputation and polemics interesting it's all a strife, wrangling. Oh, I got to wrangle my thoughts and wrangle everything together to, hmm, yeah. It's a it, 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 fascinating, fascinating word. Ha 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 ha. Next is Erlenmeyer flask. The first word is capital E-R-L-E-N-M-E-Y-E-R. -E -E Erlenmeyer flask. Noun from 1886, this is a flat-bottomed conical laboratory flask or laboratory flask. And there's a picture of one of these. Sure, I can post one on social media as well. This is just your standard flask. But, you know, back in the 1800s, 
maybe even the 1870s or 80s, I guess this flask didn't exist. This person, uh, Emil Erlenmeyer or Erlenmeyer, uh, they probably invented this flask. They were able to blow glass, possibly, maybe. I'm just guessing. Or this glass, uh, this glass flask already existed, and for some reason they were able to make it an eponym to name it after themselves. Who knows? We'll never know the science behind it. We'll never know the specifics. That's probably not true. People probably do know. And yeah, he probably invented it. It's a conical, it's got a flat bottom, like it said, and then it has a wide base, and then it goes not to a point, but it is conical shape, and then it's got a some more cylindrical top, and you can pour stuff into it and pour stuff out of it, and... I don't know what's the point of this flask. Why does it need to have this shape? What is the point? Is there a reason for its conicalness? Um, it's probably pretty hard to figure out where you, you got to mark it off. Like this is how many milliliters or liters or whatever you got to say where it is. Because you probably need to know those things when you're pouring in your, your liquids and such. Um, and uh, it's going to be... You know, the base is wide, so it holds a lot more than the part up above. Holds a lot less. Erlenmeyer flask. Uh, let's put a link in the show notes for Erlenmeyer flask so we can learn more about this Emil person and the, this flask and what's the history of it. Is there a fascinating history? Well, why did they invent it? What's the point of the conicalness and all those? I have so many questions. Or just two. <laughs> Next is... Ermin, E-R-M-I-N-E, -E, noun from the 12th century. I don't feel like we see a whole lot of the 12th century in here. Ermin, number one, uh, the plural, so the normal plural is ermines. This plural, I guess, would be just ermine again. So 1A is any of several weasels. Whose coats become white in winter, usually with black on the tip of the tail. But especially a short-tailed weasel, Mustela erminia, erminia, of the forests and tundra of Eurasia and North America. So that's where this specific ermine lives. Eurasia, North America, the tundra. This is where it's probably cold and wintry. Uh, and the forests and the tundra. Hmm. Uh, let's see. So, weasel, anything else? Yeah. And then in the winter, their coat turns white. So, they are more easily camouflaged. I don't know why there would be black at the tip of the tail. Oh, I just have a little black at the tip of the tail. What's the point of that? That's not, doesn't seem helpful for camouflage. 1B, the white fur of the ermine is called ermine. I would never, 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 never get any sort of fur at all, no matter what animal it is. Um, so I definitely wouldn't get one of these. I'm sure it's beautiful, but I'm sure those ermines would have rather have lived out their lives peacefully, just get to the end of their life in a normal way, and not have to be probably captured or bred, bred, in just stupid little cages that's no way to live they gotta go out in, into the tundra and allow their fur to turn white naturally uh, yeah not a fan of the fur stuff number two a rank or office whose ceremonial off official robe is ornamented with ermine i really want to say ermine but because that's how it's spelled but it's ermine so just because your clothes are made with this ermine fur, that is now your title. That's the name of your title, your rank, your office. Who, who is, who, what, what rank or office are we talking about? Whose ceremonial official robe is ornamented with ermine? Just anybody who can wear ermine as their official clothes gets to be called an ermine. Uh, yeah, I would think, I don't know, churches, maybe? Who's an ermine? Why an ermine? Why you wear an ermine? They don't like that. This word is from the Anglo-French, hermine, 
which is of Germanic origin akin to the old high German harmo, which means weasel. So that's what it is. They're weasels. I'll post a picture on the social media at Dictionary Pod so you can see what these ermine or ermines look like because we know the plural is can be either one. Oh, it's so cute. A stoat is another name. Um, it Mustella Armenia, Armenia, that was the same, yeah, um, I, so I think that specific, uh, one here, the short-tailed weasel with the Mustella Armenia species name is also called a stoat. And yeah, these things, I mean, it looks like a puppet. It looks fake. It looks not real. It's the cutest little thing you ever did see. Ermin. Oh, ermines. Why are they making fur coats out of you? Next word. Ha 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 ha. Ermined with a D. Adjective from the 15th century. Clothed or adorned, adorned with ermine. So if you are wearing this ermine fur, then you would be ermined. Or better yet, if you've got ermines climbing all over you and playing and having a good time maybe just eating a snack, then you would be ermined. You can all take, if you are taking a nap, which I would like to have a nap right now, and the ermines are hanging out and napping on top of you, then you would be ermined. Ha 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 ha. Next is urn or ern, spelled E-R-N-E. -E. I'll just say urn. Noun from before the 12th century. I guess I'm realizing maybe, the, yeah, the 12th century comes up more often than I realized. Because what was it? Uh, the ermine word is was the 12th century. Usually, though, they say before the 12th century, not just 12th century. So this one is before the 12th century. The synonym is the word eagle. An urn or an urn is an eagle, especially a long-winged sea eagle. Of course, we got to combine that to be a seagull, a sea eagle, seagull, mm. uh, with a short white wedge shaped tail, a short white wedge shaped tail. Now, my combination of sea and eagle became another word that we have, a seagull. Is there a connection? Were people calling them eagles that lived by the sea? And so they call them seagull, sea eagle, seagulls? We'll never know. Uh, the species name for this is Haliatis, Haliatis albicilla, albicilla, Hi, Haliatis albicilla. These are great words. Um, it's an eagle, but specifically the one that lives by the sea, and it has a wedge-shaped tail that is short and white. Uh, let's see. This word is from the Old English urn, spelled... E-A-R-N, that's how we usually say that word, uh, akin to the Old High German arn, which means eagle, from the Greek ornis, which means bird. Bird became eagle, became urn. Uh, let's put a picture of the urn bird, the urn bird on the social media. Urn, 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 urn is the word. Ha 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 Next is erode. Verb from 1612, uh, we are starting with transitive. Number one, to diminish or destroy by degrees, just a little bit at a time, just degrees. That's I guess that's what we mean by degrees, just a degree at a time, not literally 360 degrees, not that sort of degrees, um, just, just a bit, a bit by bit, that's what it is diminishing, destroying, the wind, the water. Those are good eroders. One, one, okay, so that was number one, one A. This is more specific about something, uh, diminishing, destroying something by degrees. One A, to eat into or away by slow destruction of substance. And examples of that substance would be acid, infection, or cancer. Hmm. Acid infection or cancer. Oh my! Those are all not good. 
Uh, so yes, this cancer or infection or acid can be eating away at something. It's eroding away. There's, what is it called? Necrotizing fasciitis. That's That would be an infection. I'm sure there's something more to it that's probably a virus or something. But that stuff is going to eat up your skin and your muscle. And it's going to literally erode away your body. It's eating it away by slow destruction slow destruction by from a substance and geez i don't know why my nose is so runny this morning so oh, sorry you're you luckily don't get to hear all my sniffles because i'm cutting all them out but it's irritating me okay fun acid infection cancer erosion number uh, 1b to wear away by the action of water wind or glacial ice as in the example, flooding eroded the hillside. When the hillside was flooded, or when the hill, the valley, I guess, was flooded, the, the hill was not used to seeing all this water, and so the stuff just got eroded away. Maybe little plants and trees and grass and whatever. Dirt becomes mud. Glacial ice, yes, that is another good one uh, that's a very slowly, slowly erosive because you got this big old block of ice and it's just slowly, gravity is pulling it slowly down the hill, the mountain, and it literally just like breaks up the ground below it uh, as it goes. 1C, to cause to deteriorate or disappear as if by eating or wearing away, as in inflation, eroding buying power buying power inflation and eroding buying power the amount of money that you have is going if that's your buying power how much can you buy with that money but when the prices go up you don't have as much buying power your ten dollars ain't gonna go as far you need twelve dollars to buy that thing that used to be ten dollars so now you have to buy a cheaper thing or a smaller thing or a different thing for your ten dollars of buying power deteriorating, disappearing. Yeah, it's like, oh, my buying power is being slowly worn away by this fun inflation erosion. Number two is to produce or form by eroding, as in glaciers eroding or a glaciers erode U-shaped valleys. Glaciers erode U-shaped valleys. Um... It's producing or forming by eroding. Glaciers erode. I'm trying to think of how and how is this one different a little bit? To produce or form. You're make okay. So that's how it is. Glaciers erode U-shaped valleys. They're creating the valleys that are U-shaped because there's a glacier. There was a little small valley. And then the glacier came through over thousands and thousands of years. And then it created this U-shaped valley because it was eroded away. That's how it is. It's creating a thing by erosion. Uh, here's intransitive, which is to undergo erosion, as in where the land has eroded away. The U-shaped valley was eroded by the glacial, the glacial ice, the glaciers. The, it's it's uh, intransitive to the context of the U-shaped valley, and it's transitive to the context of the glacier. Erodability is a noun. I think everything has erodability. I mean, even rocks, things that, things that you would think would last forever, those get worn away. Slowly, slowly, slowly. Erodible, spelled with an I or an A, is uh, an adjective. So something that is erodible has erodability, and it will be eroded eventually. Uh, okay, eroding. Let's ooh, let's look at the etymology. This is from the Latin erodere, which means to eat away, which is from the E prefix plus rodere, which means to gnaw, gnaw, like chomp, 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 chomp. Uh, there's more of the word rodent, See, th that word literally looks like it comes from the Latin word rodere, which means to gnaw, to gnaw, 
because the rodents always be gnawing with their cute little teeth. They're just gnawing on stuff. So their name is literally about what they do. A road. Uh, anything else about a road? Um, it's fun to go. It's a very fun pastime to go to uh, maybe a beach and look at the rocks and think about, look how smooth some of the rocks are because they've, they're being eroded away by the water. The sand, the reason that we have sand is because it's just rocks that have been eroded away from the water for all those millions of years. You are walking when you are walking on sand. You are walking on the remnants of rocks, rock remnants from so long ago. They used to be big and mighty rocks, and now they're just tiny little things that get on all of your cracks and never go away. Erosion. It's a massive, um, massively slow uh, natural process in the universe. The Grand Canyon was a made was was a made was made from erosion. What did it look like before? I what does it look like now? I haven't seen it. Maybe someday I'll see it. Ha 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 ha! Next is erogenous. We're getting into a new section here. Uh, most of these erogenous related words are going to be in the next episode. I feel like I should probably have somebody else on. I don't know. It seems a little bit weird for me to talk about these words, but whatever. Whatever. Erogenous. Adjective from circa 1889. Number one. Producing sexual excitement or libidinal gratification when stimulated. Also, sexually, sexually sensitive is erogenous. It's all about the sexy world. Um, producing sexual excitement. Well, let's, we're break, breaking it down. Something that produces sexual excitement in something else, a human probably, would be erogenous. Uh, so that could be anything, you know, whatever, we're not going to yuck anybody's yum here. Whatever you find erogenous would be erogenous to you. Um, libidinal gratification. Well, that's, that word libidinal is related to libido, which is all about, um, your sex drive, basically, you know, high libido, low libido, how interested in you, are you in sex and that. So gratification to your libido uh, when, when stimulated, and then also sexually sensitive. This would be more about, you know, something, maybe a body part on you is sensitive in a sexual way. Uh, you know, your, your armpits and your, the bottoms of your feet might be, se um, uh, sensitive in a ticklish way, but then other parts are going to be sensitive in a sexual way. So they are erogenous. You know, they say there's erogenous zones. There was a great, um, of a uh, friend's episode where they were talking about something like this. And I still think is quite funny. Uh, number two of relating to or arousing sexual feelings. So this doesn't have to be physically erogenous or physically, um, sexual exci excitement. This is more about the mental sexual feelings. And that's equally as important as the physical when it comes to the sexy world. That's what they call it, right? The sexy world? Yeah, I think so. Uh, this is from the Greek word eros, which we are going to talk about right now. Ha 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 ha. Eros, capital E-R-O-S. You could say eros. Er so it's not eros. Hmm. I always said eros, but uh, it's a, a saying technically, appropriately, correctly, that it's eros or eros. I guess that's the better Greek pronunciation. So let's try to say it that way. Eros. Noun from the 14th century. Number one, the Greek god of erotic love. Compared to Cupid, which I believe would be uh, the Roman, right? The Roman God of erotic love, something very similar. Um, are there other kinds of love? How many kinds of love are there? 
there's erotic love and that's it. No, clearly that's not true. But my question is, what other kinds of love are there? There are We know that there are lots of kinds of love. Love for family members, parents, kids, aunts and uncles, cousins, grandparents, all those people. Uh, there's erotic love. There's friendship love. So many kinds. So are there gods, Greek gods, Roman gods for all those other kinds of loves? Or what? I don't know. Maybe I'll put a link in the show notes for Eros, the Greek god of erotic love. And then also, maybe there's other, other gods and goddesses for other kinds of loves. Uh, okay, number two. The sum, the sum of life-preserving instincts, this is a long one, that are manifested as impulses to gratify basic needs, as sublimated impulses, and as impulses to protect and preserve the body and mind. And it says compare to uh, the, the synonym. No, that wouldn't be the synonym. Would it be? Death instinct. Now, I do kind of remember reading that. Um, let's see, let's see, what, what, let's do Eros versus Death Instinct, and, uh, here, Eros and Death Instinct, I think we need to put, put this, uh, link in the show notes as well, there's something called the Death Drive, and it opposes Eros, uh, okay, yeah, we, we can't dig into this right now, but there's something about, yeah, the, the death drive opposed to Eros. It's the classical Freudian psychoanalytic theory. The death drive is the drive toward death and destruction, often expressed through behaviors such as aggression, repetition, compulsion, and self-destructiveness. Okay. This is an interesting concept. So Eros is the opposite of that. This, uh, is it another psychoanalytic theory? Eros, the sum of life-preserving instincts. So the death drive, the, the death instinct is all about, I don't know, trying to get to death, trying to die, wanting to die, doing things that maybe you're not consciously trying to die, but you're doing things that are destructive to your life and your body and your mind that will lead to death, opposed to Eros, which is doing things that will make you live and be excited and fun. I don't know. I don't, I need to know more about this. So let's just read that definition again. There's a lot to it. The sum of life preserving instincts that are manifested as impulses to gratify basic needs as sublimated impulses and as impulses to protect and preserve the body and mind. What are you doing to protect? Well, I don't know, like eating and drinking water and sleeping those would probably be all under this realm, this umbrella of Eros, because they are preserving your life. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, yeah, let's go learn more about that. Let's do that. Number 3A. Love conceived by Plato as a fundamental creative impulse having a sensual element a sensual element. So, I mean, where are we talking about erotic love then compared to other loves? Love conceived by Plato as a fundamental creative impulse. A creative impulse? Hmm. Hmm. A sensual element. Okay, yeah, it's just wh however Plato was talking about love and stuff. Love and stuff. That's Eros. Well, 3B, uh, this one would often not be capitalized. Uh, this is just erotic love or desire. Just just having a love and desire in an, an erotic way for all the people or whoever. Whoever, not doesn't, you don't have to have eros for everybody, just whoever you want. I'm not going to control who you have eros for. I want to say eros, but I think it's eros. Um, well, we obviously have to talk about the etymology. Uh, it's from the Greek word eros, eros, which, well, that's with a capital E, which is from the version with a lowercase e, which means sexual love, akin to the Greek word erosthai, which means to love or desire, to love or to desire. And that's what it's all about. That eros is all about 
the love and the desire, and most of us have that, and not everybody does, and that's okay. That's okay. Uh, what else? Well, well, let's see. There's no more uh, eros or erotic-related words in this episode, but there will be more in the next episode. Not sure what I'm going to say about it, but so we're going to find out together. Ha 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 ha! Next is erose. Erose, adjective from 1793. The synonyms are irregular and uneven. Like the uneven bars, the irregular bars, specifically having the margin irregularly notched and the example i just re-listened to one of my older episodes because i listen to them every morning when they air just to make sure everything's good and i don't remember what word it was but it was something about margins and i was like oh it's like a word document margins nope nope we're talking about leaves or leaves and an erose leaf an erose leaf is irregular uneven the margins are irregularly notched usually you see leaves if they have little like jagged edges or something like that so on the outside they're very regular but sometimes they're not why is that i don't know what happens they're erose uh this is from the latin word erosus which is from oh the verb er erodere which if we go if we rewind blah, 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 back to here to eat away so it's, they're like, oh, that, that leaf has been eaten away. So it, if it's literally been eaten away by like a caterpillar, uh, can you then call it a rose? Because it was, it didn't grow that way, but it was made that way. I don't know where the designation is. Plant people, let me know. Ha 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 ha. Next is erosion. Noun from 1541, 1A. The action or process of eroding. 1B. The state of being eroded. I'm in a state of being eroded because the water is wiping away my skin. Uh, erosion. Number two. An instance or product of erosion. So what has been created from the erosion? I guess you could call that erosion. An instance or product of erosion. The Grand Canyon is an erosion because it was eroded away by erosion. Those little rats were just gnawing away at the rock. Erosional is an adjective and erosionally is an adverb. The Grand Canyon was made erosionally. Uh, no etymology because we talked about it before, so we're going to move on to another related word. Ha 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 ha. Erosive or erosive. Adjective from 1830, tending to erode or to induce or permit erosion, also caused or marked by erosion, as in erosive arthritis. Ooh, that sounds like it hurts. Your arthritis is so bad, it is eroding the inside of your body. I don't know, the tendons, the bones, the cartilage those types of things that rubbing against each other. So yeah, erosive arthritis. It's inducing, it's permitting erosion. It's marked by erosion. Yeah. Sounds like it hurts. Erosiveness is a noun. Erosivity. Erosivity is a noun. And uh, the etymology, no etymology. You know, based on the first few letters, you would think that maybe something erosive would be related to uh, erotic love because it starts with eros or eros. But no, it's a different, it's a different thing. For some reason, the word erode, when you turn, when you turn it into uh, these other forms, eros erosion, erosive, it be the D becomes an S. And I'm sure there's some good reason for that. A row, what, what else would you say? Uh, something, erosion, erode, erodeon. Nope. It's the, I don't, it, what, what's all these letters, these sounds, they're weird. Um, so we are going to end it there because the next word is, we're getting back into that, uh, into the eros, 
the erotic love world. So that will all be in the next episode. So today, we had a bunch of words, which I shall read to you. We had eristic, eristic, Erlenmeyer flask, ermine, ermined, urn, erode, uh, erogenous, eros, erose, erosion, and erosive. And I'm sorry if you see me like looking, like clicking a thing. I don't, you probably can't tell. It's probably too low. But my watch keeps on listening to me. What's with the listening? And I got to figure out how to turn off that feature. I've just been too lazy to figure it out. So, which one of these are we going to pick as the word of the episode? We, I was really fascinated by this aristic thing. What is this wanting to argue all the time? Is that what it is? Um, probably not going to pick these words that I'm skipping. Um, erode, erosion. I do. That's a fascinating thing that happens. Um, erogenous, eros. Uh, do we, are we going to pick, maybe we got more. I don't know. Um, hmm, 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 hmm. Well, it's a kind of a fun word to say. I don't, I'm, I just could say none of these were jumping out at me, really. I mean, I don't know. But just because it's a fun word to say, I'm going to pick erogenous. Erogenous. Erogenous zones. We're going to the erogenous zone. Yeah, that was fun. That was a good time. I'm now going to talk about a movie I watched. Uh, and you can't stop me. This is how it goes. Let's bring up the list. Um, I believe, I believe we are at, um, oh, yes, The Talented Mr. Ripley. That's the next one. Somehow, neither Sharon nor I had seen this movie when it came out. Oh, was it like 99? Is that what it said? Uh, 25 years ago? Is that movie 25 years old? We never watched it. Uh, it's a really interesting, fascinating story. And I don't want to say much. Um, yeah, what what do I want to say about this? I don't know, but it was it was really good, and I think it's it would deserve a, a second watch. I always I think a second watch is always good because it will solidify things in my brain better. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's good and it's interesting and intriguing and weird and fascinating and uh, what like what's his life like normally? When he's not going through this story, what is what is he doing? That talented Mr. Ripley. He's so talented. Okay. Yeah. Don't want to get, get too much into the weeds on that one. But uh, yeah, if you haven't watched it, you should watch it. This is the end of the episode. Thank you very much for checking it out. And until next time, this is Spencer dispensing information. Goodbye. Goodbye.